Let's tackle the AFC right here and now, shall we? And in doing that, I have to say the bad go to the week, or at least one of them is Dave Damashek. All these months, I've had six months. I just talked to you about the Super Bowl in overtime. I had all this time to figure it all out. And I am set with my AFC seeds, one through five, but six teams for those final two spots. And I'm really struggling to figure them out here. It's Pats, Broncos, Raiders, Browns, Titans, and Pats are definitely not going. So that leaves us with. The Bills, Jets, Chargers, Jags, Colts, and Steelers, in my book, fighting it out for the wild card slots that are in play here. That's just a warm-up here to show you where I am. What I'm doing is biding time right out of the gate here. Kevin Hench, let's tick them down. Seven all the way down all right, to well, one. Well, maybe my answers will help you figure out your answers. Okay, here we go. Now, listen, I want you to understand something as we jump into this. I, you know... I, I, I have meditated on it, but instead of treating it like pro football, let's treat it instead like it's the late David Stern digging into that bag when he would pull out a card revealing the team. Let's use okay. let's kind of sort of apply that method as we reveal our picks. The seventh seed in the AFC playoff chase or in the playoff picture come January. Kevin Hench says it will be Jacksonville Jaguars. Okay. Okay. Explain right. yourself. I'm going to explain myself. Okay. So last year, I think you and many people were like, the Jags are going to be the number one seed in the AFC. And then and, just, and would have been if it weren't for Trevor Lawrence getting beaten up yeah. and, and really struggling. And in the so second then, half of the so then there was, you know, the, the calamitous drop off. Um, if you remember the part of the reason we were, we were all leaning in that direction, uh, if Jamal Agnew doesn't fumble untouched running inside the five yard line, the Jaguars win in KC. Uh, the, the Chiefs were on the ropes as the Chiefs always are, by the way. Does anyone want to just beat them when you have them on the ropes? Nope. No, McCaffrey's going to fumble like something weird's going to happen. Agnew fumble, you know, untouched. And so uh, if you look at that Jags team and then, you know, you know, look at a healthy Trevor Lawrence, I think that they're they're going to be back closer to where they were when we thought they were a playoff team. So uh, that's my first entry. Jackson. Okay. Okay. I, I, I'm i sorry to play devil's Damashek right out of the gate here. Obviously, I'm looking at the Jacksonville Jaguars. I do think Trevor Lawrence is pretty close to the real deal. Maybe not living up to the outsized height that put him on the same level as Peyton Manning and John Elway and a very short list of other guys, but still a difference maker for them. They've upgraded. I mean, in fact, from a fantasy perspective, look at the pieces he has around him. I do think on defense, Trayvon Walker is the guy who is kind of going to hang out there always as is he, what did they make a mistake by taking him? He has to rise up a little bit with Josh Allen. So I, I do think the most critical element in 2024 for your defense, if you buy that, you're going to have an, a lead in the second half of pro football games, as you want to be able to uh, chase after the opposing quarterback there. So if Walker can rise up a little bit here, I think they have that covered. The issue for me, as you know, I am while not an O-line uh, wizard, I do understand the quality or lack thereof of that O-line is going to really dictate largely how your season goes in some situation, not every single one, not a get it out of your hand, that quick QB situation, Kyle Shanahan, acolytes and all of that. That's not the case. I don't think here with Jacksonville, well, the other thing, so I don't love their real O-line quick, real quick, real quick. Speaking of O-line. I'm, uh, clearly I'm not being real quick here. I'll, I'll try to pace speaking it up. Speaking of offensive ahead. line play, do you think it augurs well for the Patriots season that what they're going to be working on practice in practice this week is how to line up for a play. <laughs> We're not ready hey, yet for to yeah. teach you how to uh, lean your, I don't know your if any slavish. Guys, hey guys, bring it in, bring it in. I don't know if any of you guys played pop Warner. Did any of you guys play in high school? Okay. Here's how you line up for a, for a legal play. Um, yeah. We're just going to work on lining up today and, and not having a million illegal formation penalties. Never mind that you can't block anybody once the ball is snapped. Like the Patriots, it's like they forgot you need an offensive line. Oh, oh, guys, guys, guys. We don't have any offensive linemen. Oh boy. 
work in progress, but you do have to say you liked how Drake may look yes, on Sunday yes, night. Yes, yes. By the yeah. way, I know they didn't look great in the critical first half when the relevant players were out there. I have a hunch about Washington. Um, anyhow, to the Jags. The Jags, here's the thing. So their offensive line is a bottom third um, offensive line. That's not a great place to start. And speaking of starts, listen to this. I always look at the schedule. I don't worry as much about back half of schedule because injuries happen. And then what you perceive to be a juggernaut awaiting you in December is now meek because their best player or two is down and not relevant. Okay. Here's how the Jags come out of the gate at Miami, Cleveland, at Buffalo, at Houston, Indy, Chicago. That's a rough stretch to come out of the gate with. I don't see him being much more than maybe 500 at that spot. They're already behind the eight ball there and what's going to be a pretty tough AFC South, especially if uh, Will Levis um, continues to progress into year two. And I have a hunch that that's going to happen. So I am not going with the Jags. Instead, at number seven, another team that has not one but two really rough patches on the schedule. Here in the QB league, I know I just said things about Trevor Lawrence and doubting what the overall Jaguars team is going to be. I'm going to go against that, play Devil's Dambashek against myself here, and ride with Josh Allen, not the one in Jacksonville, but the one in Buffalo. I'm taking the Buffalo Bills because of Josh Allen carrying Buffalo through this tough transition. We've talked about it a fair amount here in the offseason. We talked about it last season, too. You had them missing the playoffs and going under 10 wins. And all of that, it looked like that was going to come true. They've transitioned on from some older guys, brought in some youth. There's reason for skepticism there. I am going to ride, though, with Josh Allen, who in my book is at worst the third QB in the QB league. And that's going to be enough to carry the day. But I do want to say, I mentioned those rough rough patches that could undo things. This is half their season here. They have a three-game stretch that goes at Baltimore, at Houston, at Jets. Then they have a couple of weeks of, of games that are here and there. Then they go at Colts, KC, the Niners, at Rams, at, Liners, at Lions. So bottom line is they better make their hay when they aren't in those two windows there. I think they will. I think they're going to get to nine wins, probably 10, and get there. Next up, this is a semi-bold one on a piece of paper based on the way they looked last year. They've th- th- trying to make sense of the pieces they have and making them work. I am a believer in Jim Harbaugh. I know this is bold, but for what it's worth, different situations and everything else. But man, he went in there after Jim Tom Sula failed in San Francisco, six wins or whatever. One year later, they're a 13 win team under Jim Harbaugh. I do think that, you know, it's not like he just arrived, snapped his fingers, and the team was overhauled. They were on their way to building up that offensive line before they got there. That was the critical decision at the draft that you'll recall. There are those three high-end wide receivers that we've talked about. Eddie Spaghetti's Giants landed one of those. They could have gone in that direction. Instead, they decided, let's beef up even more on the O-line. The concern with the Chargers is clear. Who in the hell are those guys? Who's going to be catching the passes? Who's going to be running the ball when it's not Justin Herbert doing it? Those are legitimate concerns. I am riding with one Jim Harbaugh and Jim Harbaugh's specific ability to tune up his QBs. Look what he did with Alex Smith. Look what he did with Colin Kaepernick. There are many examples out there. Justin Herbert is already one of the five or six best quarterbacks. He's going to elevate under Jim Harbaugh. I like the Chargers in what is halfway a bum division. In the AFC West, I say the Chargers get it. That's my sixth seed. How say you, Kevin Hench? Wow, you make a great case. And, you know, I have it's it's been a long time since I haven't uh, misled our listeners with a Chargers pick, but uh, I'm not following you down that blind alley. Okay, again. okay. Although I agree completely with the logic. I mean, they're going to be better, obviously. They're not going to win five games again. But uh, you're going to be you're going to be excited, I think, by my sick, my pick for the sixth seed. Uh Team called the Pittsburgh Steelers. I like that team. They they're good. They I like that uh, team. Black and gold. You know the thing about a really great defense is you're in every game. So it's like if nine and eight makes the playoffs. You know if you get if you get if you make a wild card, it, having seventeen coin flip games puts you in in a good situation. And I you know I know everyone kind of is like that quarterback situation is a disaster. Um, 
I, I've said all along, it, it will ultimately be Fields. I think it will be. And I I don't know. The, the way the Steelers play feels like the best, to, the, the way to get the most out of the Justin Fields we saw, who was a fantasy superstar briefly with the Bears. Like, you know, uh, 150 yards passing, 150 yards rushing. You know, so I think between the defense keeping the opponents in that, you know, 13 to 17 point range and and how how little will really be needed from the offense to win games, I think the Steelers win 10 games to make the playoffs. Well, obviously, I like where your head's at. And obviously, I hope you're right about that. I think that, you know, the six months have been devoted to the quarterback talk. You know, we've talked to any number of Steelers insiders, most recently Mark Cabali um, at the end of last week. And the thing people are understandably in the quarterback league and people love fantasy and all of that. So people are ignoring the defense. That's the strength of this team. It is a deeply expensive defense. I do think it's the best defense that Mike Tomlin's going to have in seven years. And that's saying something. I do think it's a complete, potentially dominant defense I think the offensive line will round into shape sooner rather than later. By that, I mean the midway point of the season, barring devastating injury there. They are loaded up there, but and and at running back as well. I mean, but they are George Pickens injury away from doom on that offense in terms of, of being able <laughs> to throw the ball. And, you know, Russ and Justin Fields, for all the talk about what they are versus what Kenny Pickett and Mason Rudolph is, the recurring point that I've made is their virtue – combined was they wanted to be in Pittsburgh. Once Russell Wilson signed in Pittsburgh, Kenny Pickett didn't want to be there. Mason Rudolph didn't want to be there. They bailed because they ditched. That's how the Pittsburgh wound up with Justin Fields. He kind of fell into their lap. It's been Russ for six months. It's going to be Russ in week one. Fine. Because of that defense, I think they're going to win some games coming out of the gate here and get a false sense of self. Everybody has seen the back half of that schedule. I know I say caution, getting real freaked out about how bad the back half's going to be. Remember, if you were a Steelers fan, you would have looked at the Bengals game and figured that's going to be a a, uh, a a desperately important one for Pittsburgh. And we're going to have Joe Burrow, who we can't beat. Well, Joe Burrow was injured and it didn't happen. So that's what happens, obviously, if you obsess over what's going to be in the back half of the schedule. It is heavy. And the Browns are a good team and a real good defense. And the Ravens are a good team with a real good defense and an even better offense. And the Bungles have the best player, the best quarterback in that division in Joe Burrow. I think people have forgotten about that. He will remind everybody when the season gets going, even if even if he has to wait for Jamar Chase to join him for a week or two. This is the way, by the way. This is the thing. We we, we get we get amnesia about, I mean, do you think Jamar Chase isn't going to play for the Bengals? Of course he is. It may not be week one, but he will be there sooner rather than later. Anyway, these things have spooked me about the Steelers. We'll see if I get to them, but why don't you go ahead? You started us off at six. Roll into number five, why don't you? All right, up? well, um, I, I'm definitely in your garage with my reasoning on on the Buffalo Bills at number five. I, I think uh, they they get the first wild card for really the precise reason you gave. It's like you have an elite quarterback in his prime. Uh, now, as we've gotten closer to the season, I do regret that I got out anti-Jets so quickly and so adamantly that I couldn't, you know, I, I couldn't listen to Spaghetti's logic. And I and I and I can't backpedal now. I can't get off Jets. So uh, I'm obviously Jerry gonna, Orbach it, fella. He was mad enough giving away at the one end of my uh, one of my other picks was by, wrong. by saying it's not going to be the Jets. But I okay. think if it comes down to Bills and Jets for the wild card spot, um, you know, you go with the Hall of Fame quarterback in his prime versus the Hall of Fame quarterback past his prime. That's that's my reasoning there. I mean, it's not crazy to say that we've gone over the Aaron Rodgers skepticism. Um, again, another subject we've covered for at least half a year here. I just at, at age 40, there's precious little evidence. The offset, though, uh, that, that a guy getting to 40 is going to be able to drive his team now. We've had the discussion, too. He doesn't have to be the dominant QB of his prime. He has to be a median quarterback. If he's the 16th best quarterback, that could be enough for the Jets, given the way they look here. You know, we've ticked off 
Elway, Warren Moon, Tom Brady. Those are your three positive well, examples. Of quarterback you've got, doing one, well past you've got one more non-division winner. So we, we're going to learn something here. You've already picked the Bills. So now your five pick. It, okay. It, I'm not, uh, we I know just, how you feel about the Dolphins every year. So let's see. The one it. thing I will say about Aaron Rodgers is, though, that because I'm confused by, and this is part of my, you know, ongoing inability to really define those back, those last two teams that are going to get a wild card in the AFC this year, is that if you ain't paying attention to what Tom Brady was able to do up till 45 and what LeBron's been able to do up to 40 and what Sidney Crosby's been able to do pretty long in his tooth, in his sport, there are a lot of examples of the best in their sport being able to stay a difference maker way later than guys 25 years ago used to. So that's the reason that if you want to be a Jets advocate right now, I think that's the evidence you have to kind of uh, well, but lean in that direction. Thing, but it's not so just Aaron Rodgers. Your, it's a lot of old your, guys on that team. There's a lot of old five, guys that they need to Number cover. five is your last non-division winner. That's if right. You, and, if you do not say an AFC North team right now, yeah. Then you are declaring that one team from that division is making the playoffs. Oh, which well, I, great news! I'm going to say that I'm going to say that, that I am going to say an AFC North team. I figured that, as much. And that team at number five is Baltimore Ravens. Oh no, I don't like to say it, but they're going to get into the playoffs. They are just too loaded up to miss at this point. I do think the reasons for some pessimism, Mike McDonald lives in Seattle now, and he was critical in building that defense. I also do think that that hangover of what you learned under a certain guy, if you like the system, you build off of that and it carries you through the following season. Now, Philadelphia disproved that thought last year when, when um, their two coordinators moved on and the Eagles kind of fell apart as the season wore on there. Um, they have nice defensive pieces. I don't necessarily love what they are collectively, but I think they're going to be real tough to run the ball against. They'll look at uh, what they have up front. They they are um, a sound gang up there. I have some real doubts, though, about that offensive line. That's why I'm going to say under 10 and a half for Baltimore. Um, so I'm kind of threading the needle there that they're going to get to 10 wins and still make the playoffs. They are the five seed for me. And now... On to some division winners, and I will tell you my first one in the four spot. I'm going with the Miami Dolphins once again. Yes, Aaron Rodgers is great. <laughs> yes, Josh Allen is great. But, Mike, I, listen, I, I think that all this stuff about Flores and Tua and all of that, I think it allows on some human level – to it, it deepens the relationship with what is in Miami. And he celebrates that and embraces it a little bit more. They have the pass catchers, obviously. The offensive line is an issue, but only to a degree. It's not a great offensive line on a piece of paper. But what is great is that Tua gets rid of the ball immediately as soon as it hits his hand. So it negates that. And as we've seen, they can grind you up on the ground. They come at you in layers. They have speed. They have power back there. I think the defense, it's really weird that it didn't work out a year ago. Um, I think with Phillips' return, I, I like this team in a real tough division. I think the fact that it is such a tough division is why I have them as your four seed. But I do believe in the Dolphins just like I did last year. How say you, Kevin Hench? Oh, I mean, well, first of all, it's getting it's getting thrilling for the listeners because you have now painted yourself into a corner where you've declared Joe Burrow the best quarterback in the AFC North. You're now yes. committed to either Joe Burrow or the Steelers missing the playoffs. Everyone's right. waiting with bated breath to hear right. if Jack's going to uh, abandon the black and gold. Um, obviously... The, the the brownies are, are, are regressing out of out of both of our our thoughts here as as we need. Well, us... Nick Chubb's down for a yeah, month to it, start it, the season. That's it, terrible it looks, news. It Deshaun good. Watson, but I don't know if you heard Deshaun Watson's still their QB. Yeah, and I don't know if you heard he didn't take a snap in preseason because he's just too good. They don't want to waste any of. It. They don't want to waste anything that Watson's going to drop on the world. Quickly, I do. I should point out um, related to that. Um, so I say Dolphins over nine and a half. Bills over 10 and a half feels, uh, you know, feels like a lot to going into a season, especially after I read off all those tough games they have coming at you. 
if you want to play that one, plus 135 is your payout. So that's a fun bet there. And the Chargers over nine is plus 115. I do like that the best out of the ones I just gave you there. Okay, take it away, Hedge. All right, I'll go uh, for the my first division winner, the fourth seed, uh, Houston Texans. I think everybody realizes that we're, uh, we're into, this will be year two of, 17 years of C.J. Stroud versus Bryce Young comparisons. Uh, tragic result in Carolina. And I said it on this podcast. I was like, uh, if if it's a coin flip, why don't you go with the guy with the NFL body who strafed a Georgia defense with seven NFL players in it? And uh, nobody listened to me. And 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 now and now it's uh, borne out, obviously, that C.J. Stroud's going to be going going to the playoffs a lot. Uh, in the next uh, 10 years. And and that continues this year uh, with the division winning uh, Houston Texans. I mean, you know, I guess, again, from a fantasy perspective, people see Joe Mixon and even more so Stefan Diggs, and they get excited about CJ Stroud having some enhanced pieces on his side. That offensive line looks pretty nice, or at least some a, a high percentage of the pieces that uh, – flesh out that O-line are, um, are difference makers in a good way there. But also keep in mind with Will Anderson, now they throw in Daniil Hunter on, on, uh, on defense there. And I, you know, I, I think this team, the thing that spooks me only about them is, um, you know, they're sound, you know, from coaching OC, all of it. The only thing that spooks me is I think that division is, is because of the name brands. We don't maybe, um, we don't uh, swoon or, or or shudder at the mention of them, but that you know we talk about the Jags. They're a good team. The Colts are real interesting. I had a very tough time moving on from them, and a lot of that was schedule based too. They have a very good offensive line too. And again, if you're going to circle one fantasy team, if you were to get the pieces from one. NFL offense. I think you could. There aren't many offenses that are going to be more productive collectively than the Colts have going there um but okay yes take us into so i yeah i like the texans a great deal and as a matter of fact i suspect you're going to hear their name in just a minute meantime hench tell us your number three uh i i didn't want to just go dolphins dolphins so i slid the texans to four and i'll go dolphins three um you know i sort of agree that three-headed monster uh in the in the afc east Tua, josh allen aaron Rodgers. um i I, you know, as as you pointed out, that you know the Dolphins literally sent their Triple Eight team into KC. That wasn't really a, a fair assessment of of who they were. And I think you know the regular season in, in the AFC East is going to be decided on the fast track. Yes, the playoffs might end up somewhere cold and snowy, but uh, the Dolphins are are going to win a lot of games when it's eighty five degrees. I have to say it one more time because people may just be jumping in uh, right before football season. As a reminder, every, I mean, people were saying this while the game was being played before the game was even played in frigid arrowhead dolphins have no chance. The pretty boys from Florida. I'm big on that too. Generally speaking, um, they get an incomplete. They just were wrecked by the end. They had nobody right. None of their, the, the vast majority, I should say, of their critical pieces were not in uniform in KC and then throw in the fact that it was minus 290 degrees or whatever it was on Arrowhead that day. That's what undid that season. It do not get spooked by how their season ended. And again, I know it, it counted, but they blew that game in a weird one to the Titans in Miami. I think it was on a Thursday night, if I remember, maybe it was a Monday no, night. No, either no, way. it was the last game of the week. Is that why? So it was a Monday night. So that, that one got away from him. It was sort of like, ah, the Dolphins are going to win this game. They probably felt that way on the sideline. And all of a sudden it's like, wait, the Titans won that? How did they pull that one off? That felt weird. And it ended up being hugely significant based on these seedings. And that's why they're so important. Yes, you don't want a road trip to Arrowhead, period, in the playoffs. Not when it's frigid and definitely not when you don't have um, a big percentage of your critical pieces that got you to that point in the season. But okay, Dolphins were both in on. So is it my turn at number three here? Yeah. Here we go. We're going kind of serpentine where we each do yeah, that's two, right. right? That's that's right. That's right. Okay. And here we go. The answer that you've been waiting for. 
your AFC North champion 2024 will be Joe Burrow and the Cincinnati Bengals. The offensive line ain't all the way there, but at least they're huge now on, on either end of it. That's got to help Joe Burrow out too, right? And Jamar Chase is going to be there. And I do think you'll see them transition to targeting the tight ends more as they try to figure out how to replace Tyler Boyd, but Burton is a nice piece to drop on the field as your number three pass catcher. T Higgins is still there. Obviously I do have confidence that chase is going to show up. That's not going to, they're not going to waste the season with Jamar chase on the season. I'm not uh, terribly spooked about that. Some big decisions coming for the Bengals as an organization, spoiler alert, Based on Mike Brown's history, I don't anticipate there are going to be a ton of long-term deals happening there. So I think they want to strike while the iron's hot before a bigger transition gets underway next offseason. And I just think a lot of the skepticism around the Bengals is owed to the fact that people forgot about Joe Burrow being the kryptonite to Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs. I, I, I believe in this team in the division they're playing in. And I know I'm saying Joe Burrow's the best quarterback in a division that includes the reigning MVP. I'm saying it anyway. I like the Bungles. I think they win the division and they return to being a factor in the AFC. Well, well, that's all well and good. And, and you make great points, but what our listeners really want to hear is the no playoffs for you jingle about the Pittsburgh Steelers. Cause that's, that's that. where you've arrived. I don't want to, I don't want to do that. Come Go you. Ahead. I mean, we just spent a couple of weeks doing no playoffs for you, and you were just okay. you were just okay. gaslighting us all no, by no, not no, no. doing no, 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 no playoffs for you, Pittsburgh Steelers. Okay, okay, here we go. All right. It's been a great run, you know. Kept making the playoffs more times than not. Even when you didn't have a QB, you think you came through clean on the other side, like Andy Dufresne. That's why it hurts me to say this, Pittsburgh Steelers, twenty twenty four. No playoffs for you. But wait, I have good news. I have great news. I have great news. Over eight and a half. Over eight and a half plus 125. Take it. Enjoy it. I got him in the playoffs. I got him in the playoffs. Okay, so we're not that far apart. Listen, I hope you're right. How about that? How about that? I'll be more than happy to Jerry Orr back this. And when I'm wrong, Yins, no, I'll say I'm wrong. And I hope I can say I'm wrong about these Pittsburgh Steelers. I get the nine wins. I'm not too worried about that. Um, okay. Now that brings me to number two. We've gone over them already. There's a lot to like here. What I also like are the other teams in the AFC South. And I am kind of sort of including the Titans who have the softest schedule as the last place team. Um, having, a, having a shot there. Kind of look at that offensive line. It's not like when you change regime, suddenly you have to give away all the players on the roster. I think everybody gets that, right? So there are some carryovers from the Vrabel air and what he wanted to do that are going to be useful for the new regime there. They're obviously going to be slinging the ball a little bit more than they're accustomed to. Um, I think they could be a factor, but I definitely like the Colts and I definitely like the Jags, but I like the Houston Texans that much more. I think if the Bengals are not, then the Texan Texans are the number one rival to taking down the Kansas City Chiefs. I say the Texans are your two seed in these AFC playoffs. How say you, Hedge? Well, I uh, you know I was having in the playoffs as I'm listening to this 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 riveting segment. I'm it occurs to me we probably should have gone one through seven instead Why? of seven through one because oh, we already it, know right because like now there's no drama like we once you're left. We know you're one seed, obviously. So I'll do my two and my one. Um, and I guess I, I will have a little drama. Uh, well, you should do it like, yeah, you should do it like the, when they announce uh, Miss America. So, like, so like no, if, if, if that just, if that I, team I, decides I, not to play in the playoffs, the number two seed will assume the number one seed. But by by giving my two seed, uh, I, I I mean, obviously, we we I don't have a team from the AFC West in the playoffs yet. So I there's no drama about which team that'll be my two seed in the AFC is, is the Kansas city chiefs. Um, you know, I, I I'm done betting against them. I'm done. You know, I, I was like, I think I bet plus three fifty for them to miss the playoffs last year. All I do is bet against the chiefs and get destroyed super bowl. I, anyway. So the chiefs- sweet spot is betting, betting, um, the underdog in Arrowhead. That's the way to go. That's right. That's no, no, for sure. Way. For sure. I mean, you know, 
but the books have caught on at this point. Those numbers are Baker Mayfield had him whipped. Guy stretches for the cone. Oh my God. This has been, there's been a million of those. But, but anyway. I just want you to understand, we didn't figure something out that the books haven't seen. They they are tightening those, uh, they, they, uh, so, those so, home numbers a bit. So for the uh, I, I agree, you know, I mean, you know, this time next year, I, I may come all the way around to Harbaugh uh, and I'll finally be right that, you know, the, that the Chargers and Herbert will catch the Chiefs, but not this year. Uh, which leaves my number You're saying that they'll be on an elevator, in other words. You're saying the Chargers will... Yes. You heard about them stuck in the elevator. The yes. Elevator. Continue. Uh, well done. Um, the So that leaves my AFC North champion, and I, I do not get why people think the Baltimore Ravens are going to fall off. I mean, I think they have the best quarterback in that division. I think... Kyle Hamilton, I, I mean, you know, Spaghetti's a Notre Dame guy. Like, I don't think we understand, like, top 20 player in the NFL. Like, this guy does things. He just wrecks games. And I think pairing Eddie Jackson with him, that's going to put a little juice in Eddie Jackson's tank. And, and you know, other than just being an idiot last year, Zay Flowers is a real problem. He's a real problem for defenses. And so I, I think, you know, I think it's great for the Ravens that that people, you know, like you have the Bengals winning that division and that there's just kind of being underestimated. I think the Ravens are the one seed. I think they're they're the most complete team. Um, and, you know, obviously we, we know they'll choke in the playoffs and Lamar will put up seven points or, or 10. But, but division winner, Baltimore Ravens. All right, listen, I'm not going to fight you too mightily on that. I agree with you about Zay Flowers. The other guy who seems like hasn't been getting a lot of shout outs is Isaiah Likely. Mark Andrews had the car accident a couple of weeks ago. I think he's going to be ready to go for the start of the season. I don't want to guarantee that, um, assuming he's right and and back at full strength sooner rather than later. Obviously, he is an ongoing factor for that Ravens offense. And now you throw in D- Derrick Henry. Like I told you, I don't love the offense. I I, I, in fact, I'm down on the offensive line, the pieces of it, and the experts I talked to about it seem to agree more often than not. Um, and, you know, Lamar Jackson's reach, reaching that point that we keep talking about where he is going to be running less and less and less. Now, tons of pieces. He's gotten better as a passer yeah, pretty much every year there. Um, I have him in the playoffs, so it's not like I'm uh, I'm all the way down on that team, maybe just a tick less than you. But my number one seed, Kevin Hench, which is now apparent based on the teams I've already given you, is the reigning champion, Kansas City Chiefs. They're going over a weighty 11 and a half, only a minus 110 payout on that one. Number one seed, though, plus 250 is where the juice is. Do that, and here's why. I'm not pivoting just off of what our guy Jeff Schwartz told us, but he, you know, is in contact with KC people there. Obviously, Andy Reid and everybody else there knows what's up. They understand where they are in their sort of Patrick Mahomes era journey. They see what we all see, which is that there are some bigger decisions coming on the other side of this season. Travis Kelsey is getting there. They already had him on a pitch count last regular season, and then he paid off in the playoffs. Chris Jones, same thing on defense. Now they've lost Ladarius Sneed, who was critical to them on defense a year ago. Um, The offensive line is good. Um, They have those interesting pieces, and that's what keeps a high-end team, Super Bowl champion team, takes them from being a Super Bowl contender perennially is when you start hitting on those those late round picks. I always think of the Seahawks uh, a decade ago with that. The Chiefs have have uh, successfully done that themselves here to boost up the overall roster. It's all about 15 though. Obviously for me, I think he understands he's a, he's a student of the history. He's like Tom Brady in that way. He sees where he is, what he needs to do. I think he knows. I think Andy Reid knows. I think Travis Kelsey knows that this is a big year to not mess around. All the talk about we were road warriors. We did it. Nobody thought we could do it. We we, we ran through the AFC with three with with two road games, three total games to get to the Super Bowl. People didn't think we could do it. They I, there is now a sense of 
oh, we can take our foot off the gas for the regular season. It doesn't matter. I think the opposite. I think they understand that they could have fallen off against the Bills or the Ravens. They don't want to play that game again. They want it all to run through Arrowhead. I think they're, they are going to be dead set on achieving exactly that. Kansas City Chiefs, the best team in football, best team in the AFC 2024, your number one seed. Okay, I, I, I like everything you're saying there. Do you think there could be uh, trouble in paradise when Taylor Swift uh, endorses Kamala Harris and Harrison Butker endorses the deeply devout Donald Trump, the man of God? Well, it's funny. It's legit funny in this sense, because I've said many times, you know, our guy Chris Long putting his arm around Malcolm Jenkins when Malcolm Jenkins was raising his fist for the Philadelphia Eagles during the national anthem. There were a lot of people who said, that's it for this Eagles team. It's going to disrupt the locker room. There's going to, you know, there's going to be discord and that, you know, they're not going to be able to go the distance as a result. Spoiler alert, the Eagles won the Super Bowl that year. I'm sure that Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift know where their good friends, the Mahomes are politically. So I don't think it's as big an issue. I did legitimately think about that. Is that, is that damaging to the locker room? Um, probably not. I, I, I think that Andy Reid has created a thing, same thing as you saw with Harrison Butker, like, ah, well, he just dismisses it as a non-factor. Some locker rooms it might be. I don't think that Andy Reid allows it to be one. And it really comes down to, but I, but I legitimately hear your point. So there you have now, it. Listen, you, you mentioned, ahead. uh, in that analysis, you know, when the Seahawks, uh, were last relevant, like 10 years ago. Who was the quarterback on that team? I'm trying to remember. It's so long ago, I can't remember. Oh, a guy who was a guy who was destined for the Hall of Fame back then. What was his name? Danger Russ, right? <laughs> oh my! Um, he's, I think he was unlit. He was going to win unlimited starting Super quarterback Bowl. in 2024. <sighs> did I say no playoffs for you? I did, right? Okay. Um, I hope I'm wrong. Eddie Spaghetti, your quick review there. Um, I, I mean, I can run through my team, see where we, we differ. Go ahead, please. Or, or I'll do my quick, uh, 60 second, you know, AFC West, number one seed overall, Kansas City Chiefs. I'm not going to argue with that. I think they're the Super Bowl champion. Uh, but, you know, they're going to be in the game again. They're the best team. I'm not going to go in depth there. Number two seed and the winner of the AFC East. No surprise. You listen to the show. I am picking the New York Jets. Don't care about Aaron Rodgers, who he votes for, what he <clears throat> listens to, what he says. Um, the guy, I don't care about his age, the number of touchdown passes he had two years ago, not that different than most of the other seasons. And again, I think the Jets roster is just one of the best on, on paper, at least in the entire conference there. It's old. Uh, I, I think uh, the third seed, and I'm really close to picking an upset here, but I'm going to go a little chalk and go Houston Texans uh, winning the AFC South on my three seed. I'll get back to that division in just a moment. And then to win the AFC North, I'm kind of flipping uh, because I have been speaking highly of the Steelers, but I am going to go Ravens win the division. Uh, but I'm going to have Hands to talk you into it. I was between. Oh, I wanted to see if I had the Steelers winning it, but I'm going to have I I'm going to have the Ravens winning it just because I, I do think that defense still is loaded. I think Zay Flowers um, and Derrick Henry. I don't think Derrick Henry is going to add much to that team, what they already do. But I just think they are. There's different ways they can beat you and their defense is still solid. Um, we have we did kind of forget about Joe Burrow, but I, I just feel like that Bengals team, the O line, a couple of their defensive, uh, you know, defensive back. They, there's a lot of holes in that that roster. Um, and I think the Steelers are going to make the playoffs from the AFC North. I said I'll get back to the AFC South. I definitely think the Jacksonville Jaguars. I like this team a lot. I like their pass catches, even losing Calvin Ridley, Brian Thomas, bringing him in. Uh, they, they signed Gabe Davis, Evan Ingram, and kind of transformed himself into an actually good pass catching tight end. Their front defensive front is very good too. Uh, Trevor Lawrence needs to have a really good season. I almost had them winning the division, but I like the Jags a lot. And that leaves one more uh, playoff spot. I do not think the AFC West will send another team. Sorry, Chargers. I do believe in Harbaugh. That's a couple seasons down the road right now. You have absolutely no offensive talent outside of. Justin Herbert and I guess like Joe Alton, Rashawn Slater since uh, Jim Harbaugh called uh, off. off Quentin tackles. Johnson is like their best bet at this point is Quentin Johnson. Like that's, that that would be problem. the difference maker. Yeah, right. Yeah. I know. I'm I'm with you on all that. That's so, why I really wanted to write them off, but I'm riding with Herbert and Harbaugh as being bigger factors than and, everything around them. And he'll he'll turn around and and the last playoff spot is basically it's do you like the Dolphins or do you like the Bills? Uh I just think the Bills having the superior quarterback in Josh Allen, he will kind of hero ball them and will them into a playoff spot. Um I just think that the AFC East was going to shake out. I think the Jets will be on the 12 win. It's going to be like 12 wins, 11 wins, 10 wins. Uh I see the Dolphins just having a couple issues here and there. If Tyree Kill isn't playing at his all-world level, I think that team is just not really as good. 
uh, as the the Bills are. So I, I like the Jets just because their their whole roster outside of Rodgers is just too good. So I think they're going to win that division. So AFC East sends two teams. AFC North sends two teams. Sorry, Bengals. Sorry, Dolphins. You do not make it. AFC South sends two. West and uh, the uh, eventual champion, it. just the uh, the Chiefs. Sing it. For who? Who am I singing for? I need a lot of teams. Don't, don't make it. You just said who didn't make it. Just say it. So you have to sing. If well, Henge can make me sing it, then you have to sing it. Well, listen. For who? Who am I singing for, though? I said the Steelers in the playoffs. Dolphins. Dolphins. Why is this singing for the Dolphins? I don't care about the Dolphins. No play. No playoffs for you. Sorry, too. Yeah. Like, there you well, go. listen. Yeah. Spaghetti and I, our garages, you know, we, we have a six-car garage. We almost have a seven-car garage. Our only difference is... Is Dolphins and Jets. That's mm-hmm. it. Ah. And then and then we're we're six for six on the other teams. That's and we're right. That's the beauty of it. 